Thank you. Very nice. Nice to be home. Very nice to be in New York. Um, I, uh, I had a pretty... Yep! You know how you know someone's from Staten Island? They let you know that they're from Staten Island. If you don't know what Staten Island is, it's like New York's abortion that live. Just shitty place. <laughs> nah, there's like there's good people everywhere, but like not in Staten Island at all. <laughs> yeah, like everybody could die in Staten Island, and I I wouldn't lose sleep over it at all. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, I guess I gotta find a new Xanax dealer. Like that's about <laughs> it. <laughs> no, it's nice to be home. I had a I had a fucked up week. I had a long week. Uh, I had to fly Cape Air. I don't know if anybody's ever flown. Cape Air, but I'll tell you what it is. It's a Volvo that flies. <laughs> it's a Volvo with wings. Um, first thing, uh, you pull up to the airport. I didn't even know it was the Cape Air airport because it looked like a post office. <laughs> so I told the Uber driver, I was like, listen, I think we're at the post office. And he was like, no, this is the airport. And I was like, well, okay. <laughs> first thing you do when you get in there, there's one lady working in the airport. <laughs> and when I got in there, I was very like, I was like, what the fuck's going on? And she was like, okay, weigh your carry-on. I was like, that seems normal. I've weighed my carry-on before. And she was like, now weigh your backpack. I was like, well, that's a little odd. I've never really weighed my backpack, but you know, maybe there's not a lot going on at Cape Air. Maybe she's just trying to get a good work in. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I weighed my backpack and then she was like, now you. I was like, why, why do I have to be weighed? And she was like, well, we have to weigh everybody so we know where to sit you on the plane so it doesn't topple over. Because it's not like a regular plane. And I was like, did you just say regular plane? Why the fuck is that okay? It's terrifying. You walk to the plane, you could sit shotgun with the pilot. Like he's your buddy from college. The pilot was trying to give us a speech before. It was crazy. He was just like, all right, guys, before we take off on Cape Air, uh, I just want to let you know pretty much the most important rule. Uh, you guys know how on a regular plane? I was like, what's with this fucking regular plane thing? I was like, get a new spiel. He's like, you know, when you're on a regular plane, they'll like turn your phones off, but you really don't have to turn your phone off. On this plane, turn your fucking phones off. All right, everybody have a safe flight. All right. <laughs> Just happy to be home. Very, uh, get a little older. And when you say that and you're 22, people immediately think you're a dick. <laughs> but like, I'm the oldest I've ever been. So like, to me, I've been around. Like, I've noticed little things getting older. Like, now I can't get hard by just like looking at a picture of a girl. Yeah, I can't do it anymore. At first, I thought I was gay. I was like, oh no, I'm gay now. I was like, that's what this means. No, I didn't know like when you get older, you can't just like get hard. I didn't know you have to like bat it around and get it going, you know? You used to be able to get hard, any picture of a girl. She didn't have to be naked, as long as she was kind of like this. Like I could always just jerk off. Is there some sort of a tilt? My mom's cool, man. She's getting old now. It's kind of sad. Like, she just turned 46, and like, yeah, she still works, and 
she still drives. She's a trooper. I don't know how she does it. No, every day that woman gets up, I'm like, you're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> My mom's so old, it's like, it's cute now. Like, whenever she does anything, I find it adorable and I'm proud. Like, I talked to my mom the other day. She was like, last night, I got home at like 11.30. I just, I went out for some drinks with my friends. And I was like, fuck yeah, you did. <laughs> Fucking Amy, let's go. <laughs> it's weird, my mom's single. It's a very weird thing. My mom's single, my sister's a teenager. It's very weird, you know? Because whenever one of them brings a dude home, I don't know who he's for. Like, when I answer the door, I don't know if I'm supposed to, like, beat him up or, like, play catch. Like, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm like, are you my new dad? You want to see my room? <laughs> I give my mom a lot of credit. She, uh, she had to do a lot of weird shit. You know? She had to, like, my mom had to buy me condoms. <laughs> I feel like that's a dad's job. I mean, I, I never had a dad, but I assume that's like the dad's job. Like in my head, uh, how I would get condoms from my dad is we would be having a catch and then all of a sudden a huge box of condoms would appear in his hand and he'd be like, go long! And he would throw it and then I would catch it and he'd be like. I don't know, I don't have a dad, but I assume that's like how it goes down. I'll tell you how it's not supposed to go down. Uh, I got home from school, and I was like a sophomore in high school, and my mom was like, hey, I left a little present for you on your bed. <laughs> I was very excited. I was like, oh my God, perhaps it's sneakers. I was very, <laughs> there's endless possibilities. It could be DVDs, those were hot at the time. It could have been a million things. I get up there, it's a 50 pack of condoms. Every variety, every brand. And I just wanted to be like, ma, who the fuck do you think your son is? <laughs> like, I never even brought a friend home. Like, what made you think I was out there, like, slinging pussy? <laughs> I hang out with you every night. Do you want to fuck me? Do you want to fuck me, Mom? No, let's fuck. I'm mad now. <laughs> me and my mom are really close now. I... This is how close me and my mom are. Like, I send my mom pictures of my dick whenever I'm worried. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> She's a nurse. She's a nurse, so I figured whenever, like, I get a dot or something, Rather than go see the doctor, I could just cut out the middleman, send it to my mom. That's not fuck, no, fuck you. I don't like that. No, maybe you guys aren't just that close with your mothers. Yeah, I mean, my mom are on a dick level. No, like, no, here's an example. Like, if there was a line of dudes waiting to show their dick to my mom, right? It's her lucky day. Uh... I, I could cut that line <laughs> because I'm with the family. You understand? <laughs> no, I would send my mom pics. I'd be like, hey, mom, sorry to bother you, but, you know, do you see anything wrong here? And she'd be like, yeah, Pete, definitely something wrong. <laughs> and I'd be like, what? She's like, you're sending me pictures of your dick. What the fuck's wrong? <laughs> I'm a school nurse. <laughs> She was like, put a Band-Aid on it. I don't know. No, I was, a, I was a loser in high school. It was my fault, though. Like, I realized that uh, it's my fault. I went to three different high schools, okay? The first high school I went to, I was like, wow, everybody here is a fucking asshole. <laughs> and then I got to another high school, and I was like, wow, lightning strikes twice. <laughs> everybody here is a fucking asshole, too. And then I got to the third high school, and I was like, oh, it's me. <laughs> and I was like, it was me the whole time. I looked down, I had a rolling school bag. I was like, perhaps I had something to do with this. <laughs> I think it might have been my fault. No, fuck that. Why is the rolling school bag the gay one? I never understood that. That makes no sense to me. Grown, grown adults. Hey, you're a fucking loser. You have a rolling school bag. I never understood that. What, do you want to carry your books like a peasant? That makes no sense to me. <laughs> Fucking roll down the hallways like a G. All your fucking textbooks. What you doing? Studying, motherfucker. Like, why is that? Why was it lame? I never understood that. I had a rolling school bag for four years. I loved it. 
Yeah, I, even though I looked like I was waiting for a flight for like four years. <laughs> People used to make fun of me, and what sucked was I never flew before, so I didn't know that they were making fun of me. I actually thought that they were helping me. I'd be like, hey man, can you help me find science? And they'd be like, yeah, I think it's in like Terminal 4. And I'd be like, oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, thank you. I um, dormed, dormed for, I went to college for a little bit, I dormed. I fucking hated it, does anybody here dorm? Yeah, you go to NYU, you go here. No, where do you, where do you pe gals go? Oh, you go to Pace. Whatever. <laughs> I feel like doming for girls is fun, though. It is, you have fun with your girlies, right? <laughs> yeah, because girls could like get their periods together and find out who A is or whatever. <laughs> yeah, there you are. I know what girls do. <laughs> I hated dorming. I, think, I feel like dorming with like any guys in your dorm right now. You? What's up, my man? Where do you dorm? You dorm now? Where at? 23rd. So is that a dorm for a school? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Where do you go? West 23rd and 8th. <laughs> for what? For here? NYU? Oh, that's what's up. How many people in your dorm? Uh, three girls. Three girls? <laughs> we don't have enough time. <laughs> we don't have, if we weren't shooting a special, it would be an hour of just <laughs> finding out everything about this young man. <laughs> One of them's your girlfriend? Ex-girlfriend. <laughs> so dope. You just walk in like a G, like, sup, babe. Fucking walk away. That's so dope. When I went to college, it was four dudes uh, in a room, like, maybe from, like, here to here. And it was four dudes. It was awful. We would all wake up with boners and look at each other. And we would be like, this isn't what I thought college would be at all. Everybody has to shit. Nobody wants to go first. I fucking hated that. I hated my roommates. I remember one of them found out he had the biggest dick in the dorm, and then all of a sudden he was making all the decisions. All of a sudden. He was like, I think we're gonna go bowling tonight. And I was like, oh, all right, big dick, Brian. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I used to jerk off when they were there. Fuck them. I don't give a shit. Yeah, fuck them. I won every night. They had no idea. Sick. I was jerking off while they were fucking typing. Awesome. I did it at night. I didn't do it during the day. I'm not a savage. All right. Yeah, it wasn't like four o'clock. Like, hey, what's up, bro? Ready for study hall? Like, it was like at night. No, I like to help people. This is how you jerk off uh, if you're sharing a room with somebody. Very simple. You get a very big bag of Doritos. Doesn't have to be Doritos. I just always go with Doritos. Get a big bag of chips, okay? And then you start crinkling it around with your non-jerking off hand, right? Creating some sort of an ambiance. <laughs> and then while you're doing that, you jerk off. <laughs> yeah, they cancel each other out. My roommates just thought I had a snack every night. <laughs> They're like, Pete eats Doritos every night for like a half hour and doesn't share them with anybody. And then when he's done eating, he goes, oh, fuck, fuck, oh, fuck, yes, oh! First day of college, I had this class, and there was a mentally challenged kid in it. And I have no problem with mentally challenged kids. That would be very weird if I did. Like, if that was my beef. <laughs> if I was like, peace and love and fuck mentally challenged kids. You're like, what's up with this guy? The problem I had was I was also in that class. Yeah, so like one thing came to my mind when I saw the kid. I was first like, oh, and then I was like, huh, wait a second. I was like, am I mentally, like is this, 
Is this how they're gonna tell me? They're just gonna throw me in? Hope I figure it out? No, I wouldn't be surprised. I was like, maybe I'm like one of the better ones or something. Maybe I'm their leader. I had no idea. By the way, I see a lot of people getting sensitive because mentally challenged people are a very sensitive topic. I understand completely. But to make you feel better, I have a mentally challenged cousin and I asked her if I could do these jokes and she was like, Ugh! so it's completely fine. <laughs> She's very supportive, loves me, okay? She wasn't like, oh, she was like, Ugh. I know the difference, it went up. Remember, I had to sit behind, I had to sit behind this mentally challenged kid. You know, because we were in alphabetical order, it just so happened. We had the same close last name, I got to sit behind him and like, I was like, this is like karma. This is what I get for cheating on every test in high school. God's like, cheat now, have fun drawing dragons on your test. I'll never forget this, this is a true story. I'm like, not that good at comedy. This is like a real thing that happened, I'll tell you. We had movie day. In college, I'll tell you, yeah. Teacher wheeled in a cart and was like, it's movie day. And I was like, sick. And I was like, wait, it's college. Why did... I'll never forget this. The teacher picked Forrest Gump, okay? It's a true story. And I'll never forget this. Before he starts the movie, he goes, all right, class, who here saw Forrest Gump? I swear to God, the mentally challenged kid just goes, I did, sir, and that's my favorite movie. And I laughed so fucking hard. <laughs> I laughed so hard, and then I looked around, nobody else was laughing. <laughs> Even the mentally challenged kid was like, are you fucking serious right now? It's a nice dragon. <laughs> Been um, trying to smoke less weed. If you are in this front row, I'm sure it's, you know it's not working out very well. I don't want to quit. I'm not like a pussy. I just want to smoke like at night. I just like to not be high all the time. It's hard, but I feel like, you know, I can figure it out eventually. It's not good. Like when you don't smoke weed for a little bit, like it's crazy. Like you have feelings, you know, like something will happen and I'll be like, Hey, I don't, I don't like that. As opposed to like seven years of just being like, it is what it is. <laughs> Swag or whatever. I think I smoke weed subconsciously. Like I don't even know I'm doing it. I'm serious. Like I think I smoke weed so like if I fail in my head, I'll be like, well, I was high. So what did you expect? You know what I mean? But if I accomplish something, I'll be like, and I was fucking high. Woo! So it's like this, I always win in my head. This Christmas, I, uh, I had a, a couple weeks off. I tried to go to rehab uh, for my mom as a Christmas gift. Uh, but it's weird, I tried to go to rehab because I wanted to smoke weed less. Like, I didn't even want to quit. Don't tell anybody that in rehab, by the way. So I didn't have enough time to think about it. I was like, I'll go to rehab. So I asked my friends, uh, you know, people who know about this stuff, and I was like, where should we go? What's like the best place? They were like, you should go to a rehab facility in Utah. Without even thinking, book the flight. <laughs> Did you know, when you book a flight to Utah, there is a layover in Denver. <laughs> and I was sitting in the airport like, is this part of the fucking rehab? Like, do I, is this level one? Do I have to get past this? Also, did you know that there's rehabs everywhere? You don't have to go to Utah. <laughs> I found that out, because I got there, and I was like, hi, my name's Pete Davidson. They're like, oh, where are you from? I was like, I live in Manhattan. And they're like, oh, have you heard about our facilities in Manhattan? <laughs> I was like, no, I heard about the one in Utah. It's a weird thing going to rehab when you want to smoke weed less, like not even quit. Because people are there for crack and meth. And I'm there because like, I want to know what food tastes like. 
That's what happens, by the way, when you stop smoking weed for a little bit. You're like, oh, some food is not good. <laughs> First thing you do when you get into a rehab is uh, you check into detox. I didn't know there was no such thing as detox for potheads. So I should have known something was up because I was in a line waiting to check in and everybody in front of me was shaking and I wasn't. And I felt uncomfortable. I was like, fuck that. I'm not going to be the odd man out in rehab. So I started shaking myself. Uh, I was like, oh, I kicked in later, you guys. Fuck, holy shit. I remember this guy was just like, hey, guys, I'm Joe. I do crack. I died. And then he was like, but they brought me back. Ha ha, obviously. And I was like, ha ha, ha ha. I don't know if that's funny. <laughs> and he was just like, this is my last shot. Everybody was like, thank you. Thank you, Joe. And I didn't know you thanked him after, so I was late. I was like, oh, thanks, Joe. <laughs> and then everybody looked at me and I was like, They had all these weird rules. Very, very weird rules. Like, they were like, I wanted to watch Crank 2. The guy, there was a bunch of people in the rehab. I was like, yeah, you ever see Crank? And the guy's like, oh, yeah, it's one of my favorites. I was like, you ever see Crank 2? He's like, no. I was like, how long have you been in here? <laughs> and I, like, in order to watch Crank 2, you have to fill out a form. Like, if you want to watch something, I was like, Crank 2. And they were like, no, you can't watch Crank 2. Because there's drugs in it, there's sex in it, there's violence in it. You know, what if someone watches it and then it makes, gives them the urge to go do that again and it ruins their, their program? And I was like, that makes no fucking sense. That would never, like, if that's the reason why you're gonna withdraw, like, you shouldn't be in rehab anyway. That's just how I feel. Like, I, I doubt I'm ever gonna be in a rehab meeting ever again, and someone's gonna be like, hey, my name's Max, uh, it's my second time back. <sighs> Crank two. <laughs> like... I love smoking weed. I'm probably never gonna stop, to be honest with you. Yeah, and I, I'm not doing it for an applause. That's just I have problems and I need it. And it makes me feel better. So, I got, like, I love, smoking, I love smoking weed and driving. It's my favorite. Yeah. I love being high when I'm driving. I'm like, I don't mind traffic. I'm like, oh, company. All right. <laughs> I'm like, we're all in this together, you guys. You ever make friends in traffic? That's the fucking best. Pull up to a stop, go to the guy next to you, like. <sighs> the guy next to you is like. <laughs> I love smoking weed. I don't think I would have any friends if I didn't start smoking weed. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have any friends. I've been friends with my friends for seven years. I don't know anything about them, but we got along very well. <laughs> Just been like seven years of like, <clears throat> and that's it. <laughs> you hear that new song? Yeah, it's dope. Our whole friendship, it's fucking amazing. <laughs> I love smoking weed or watching movies. It's my favorite. You ever get so high you like watch the credits? <laughs> and you're like, who directed this? He did a good job. <laughs> I think that's what IMDb was created for. People would just get high and they're like, where is this guy from? <laughs> and then you're like, oh, there he is. He was in The Patriot. <laughs> one of my favorite movies to watch high is Jaws. Jaws is one of my favorite movies because it was made in the 70s, so when I watch it, it looks like a movie. Does that make sense? It probably doesn't, but when I watch a movie now, I'm like, oh, that could happen. But because it's in the 70s, I could tell. I'll give you a couple examples. Like, I love the way they talk in Jaws. They talk very differently. Like, there's a scene where Richard Dreyfuss wants to ask the mayor if he can cut open the shark to see if that little Kittner boy's in there. I'm glad you left, because it always makes me laugh. <laughs> No, I'm serious. It always makes me laugh. I think it's just a visual of, like, what if the little boy was actually in there? You know, like, what if he, like, cuts it open and all of a sudden the boy's like... <laughs> and he's like, he was in there, chief! That'd be hilarious. 
I just like the way they talk in Jaws. There's a scene, Richard Dreyfus wants to ask the mayor if he can cut open the shark. And he's like, hey, could I cut open the shark to see if the little Kittner boy's in there? And the mayor goes, I'll be damned. <laughs> if you cut open that shark and I see that little Kittner boy spill out all over the dock. And I'm like, that's fucking sick. Nobody talks like that anymore. If that scene was made today, that whole scene would be like, hey, can I cut open the shark? He'd be like, nah, fucking do it later. <laughs> Don't want to get the dock dirty and shit. <laughs> also, I was watching Jaws, I found out a scene that doesn't actually belong in there. It's not proven, I just watched it and I was like, I felt. Here's the scene. So Richard Dreyfuss finally is cutting open the shark. And this fat guy comes out of nowhere and he's just like, hey! Hey! What type of shark is that? And Richard Dreyfuss goes, uh, it's a tiger shark. And then the fat guy goes, a what? <laughs> that scene shouldn't be in the fucking movie. It makes no sense. I was like, what is that, Spielberg's uncle? What is that? It's probably his uncle. He's like, Stevie, you gonna put me in your movie? And he's like, yeah. Can you say a what? He's like, can I fucking say a what? Come on. <laughs> Another movie I watched high, I actually really like. I watched The Vow recently. I love The Vow. If you don't know what The Vow is, it's uh, Channing Tatum and Rachel McAdams, and they're married. And in the first scene, they get in a car accident, and luckily, she goes through the windshield. And, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, it's my favorite part. And it's in slow motion, so you get to enjoy it. No, fuck that, it's always the guy going through the windshield. And I was like, oh, it's the girl. I was like, oh, all right. All right, Nicholas Sparks, I see you. I'm invested. She goes through the windshield. She ends up losing her memory. She doesn't remember that she's married. The movie should have been over right there. That's it. <laughs> should have been a short film about some bitch who should have wore a seatbelt. That's all I needed to be. <laughs> Instead of that, the rest of this movie, this poor guy is trying to make his wife fall back in love with him because she don't remember him. That would never happen. <laughs> I mean, maybe it would, but... It, I tried to put myself like in that situation whenever I watch a movie and I wouldn't be able to do it, if I'm being completely honest. Like if I get married to you and you become a vegetable, like you're a vegetable now and I'm on the run because I'm not a vegetable. If that was me, honestly, and I walked into my wife's room and I walk into the hospital, I go to my wife's room and I'm just like, oh, oh my God, honey, are you okay? And she's like, who are you? I'd be like, oh, wrong room, my bad. <laughs> Sorry to bother you, man. <laughs> I would call on my friends and be like, yo! Guess who don't remember? <laughs> I tried, I said hello? <laughs> I've been thinking about what I want to do with my life. Try to figure it out. First thing is to find a pair of pants that fit. <laughs> like, I have a belt on and they still don't fit. Like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> no, I started wearing skinny jeans because I heard it ruined your cum, and I was like, sick, bring them on. <laughs> yeah. A big supporter of skinny jeans. <laughs> they ruin your balls. It's a great brand. That should be the commercial. It should be like two people fucking coming inside and then him just putting on skinny jeans. <laughs> 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 no bag, no problem. <laughs> I was wearing skinnies. Figured out what I wanted to do. I want to do commercials. I want to be a spokesperson. I don't want to do movies. I don't want to do stand-up anymore. I really just want to be like a commercial guy. 
like an AT&T guy. They're like, hey, you need a fucking phone? Like, I'll be that guy forever. <laughs> no problem. Hey, you need a fucking phone? <laughs> but I was talking to my friend. Some people hate spokespeople. Some people do not like spokespeople at all. You know, like whenever I'm watching TV and my friend's over my house, and if I'm watching TV and, and Flo, the progressive lady, comes on, <laughs> immediately the person I'm with is like, oh, this fucking bitch. And I'm like, what? <laughs> why? I mean, I agree, but like, why? Why do we hate her so much? My friend was like, is that what you want to be? You want to be Flo? I was like, I'm sure she has friends. Like, I'm sure, I'm sure she's not alone on the weekends. And I was like, look at Jared. I'm like, he's the worst one out of all of them. <laughs> no, some people don't know what happened with Jared, and I love to tell them. <laughs> Literally my favorite thing in the world. When I go, did you hear about Jared? And they go, no. I'm like, well, I hope you have a half hour. <laughs> if you don't know what happened with Jared, basically he fucked a bunch of kids. <laughs> Once you fuck a kid, it's over for you. There's no coming back from fucking a kid. Get that in your head now. <laughs> I'm serious. Once you fuck a kid, it is over. So it's very hard for Jared to ever come back. He will never come back. And there's only one way the place that he was repping can come back, and I figured out how, is if I am the new spokesperson <laughs> and I play one of the kids that Jared fucked. <laughs> And I'm like, hey guys, I'm Timmy. I don't know, I feel like Timmy would be a kid that would get fucked. <laughs> like if I was a pedophile at a playground and I was like, what's your name? And he was like, Timmy. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna fucking fuck the shit out of you. <laughs> what about me? Shut up, Connor. Nobody wants to fuck you. <laughs> fucking Connor, always trying to get raped. <laughs> no, I would be like, hey guys, uh, you know, my name's Timmy. I'm one of the kids that Jared molested. It's a very unfortunate situation, but the sandwiches are still great. <laughs> he, he didn't fuck the sandwiches. You can still eat the sandwich. He fucked my little boy booty hole, but not the sandwich. <sighs> I'm a hypochondriac. Uh, I am, I'm a psycho. I'm very crazy. I know I'm crazy. So like, it's kind of okay, but it's really not. You know, like I wake up every day and I'm like, I have not been arrested yet. And I'm like, good job. <laughs> I'm a hypochondriac. I always worry about my dick. I don't know about anybody else, <laughs> but I'm always worried about my dick. How are you? Do you always worry about your dick, dude? It's good? Oh, well, aren't you the fucking most confident man in the world? <laughs> oh, fucking Mr. Dos Equis over there. <laughs> Hey, ever worry about your dick? Nah, I'm fine, man. Oh, fuck you, dude. How's that? <laughs> Actually, never in my life. My dick is perfect. I always worry about my dick. I always freak out for no reason. Like, um, here's, here's how I thought that you could get something. Like, uh, I'm sure every guy can relate to this. This ruins my day whenever it happens. Whenever I have to take a shit in a public place, and my dick touches the toilet seat. It ruins my day immediately. I'm like, oh my God, I just got everything in this place. My dick starts like coiling back. It's like it knows what it did. And it's all, I'm like, no, fuck you. I actually told my doctor that once. I was like, before you take a look, I think I know what it is. I'm like, you ever take a shit in a McDonald's and your dick touches the toilet seat? I think that's where I got this from. And he's like, that's not possible. And I was like, well, you're the doctor. I'm just trying to help. I like going to free clinics because they know what's up. You know, nobody goes to a free clinic for chemo. Everybody goes to a free clinic because they had fun yesterday. <laughs> I like to go to this free clinic in Brooklyn because it's very well run. That's right, you could yelp other things besides food. <laughs> and I went in and it's very well run. The first thing, they don't waste any of your time. They, it's great. The first thing they do, they prick your finger to test you for AIDS. They give you a number and then you sit with everybody else and then while you wait to see the doctor, they'll call your number, tell you your AIDS result. Yeah, it's like bingo, it's sick. 
It's fucking best establishment in Brooklyn. Maybe I'm not painting a good picture enough. A, a nurse will literally come out to the waiting room and be like, 33, no. <laughs> and 33's like. <laughs> 34 is in the corner like, fuck. There's been seven no's in a row. for a yes. I've never seen a yes yelled out. I've never seen a yes yelled out. Like, I've never been there and a, and a lady's been like, uh, 34? Yeah, you have eights. <laughs> like, that's never happened. I don't know what they would do. What do you think they would do? I'm sure they would just, like, take you into a room and throw you a Magic Johnson jersey and be like, welcome to the team, bro. <laughs> Come on, be positive. Don't be negative. I gotta tell you a funny story about Heavy, my boy Heavy. So I'm, I'm a, I hate everybody, but I won't let you know it. Like I'll be really pissed or not having a good time. You'll never be able to tell. Heavy, exact opposite. <laughs> Something's wrong, you know about it immediately. It's why I love bringing him places, right? So me and him, we go to the Justin Bieber concert. We get very fucked up. We're like, let's go see the Biebs. No, he puts on a great show. He really does. He puts on a sick show. You should go see him. Don't fucking clap. This is my time. But seriously, <laughs> you should go see him. He does put on a great show, okay? Now, enough ball washing for him. All right. So me and him, we're really fucked up. We're very late. We're like an hour late to the concert. And we have front row. We have, like, seats over here, okay? We're late. We get there. There are these two little girls. They could... They're eight years old tops in our seats having the fucking time of their lives. Like, you couldn't tell these girls nothing. Like, they were having just the sweetest, best time ever. So I go to Heavy and I'm like, listen, you're 30, I'm 22. I'm like, let's give these kids their seats, let them have a nice, fun time, and we'll just hang in the back. And Heavy goes, ah, oh, absolutely not. <laughs> And I swear to God, he goes up to these two little kids and he goes, um, excuse me, little princesses. Uh, are these your seats? And they go, no, mister. And he goes, uh, then get the fuck out. <laughs> One time. <sighs> and then like, without skipping a beat, he's like, this is gonna be sick. What else so much fun? <laughs> fun. I've been, uh, I watch a lot of porn. Like I could post the throwback Thursday photo of me jerking off and, um, like, I, I do. I watch a lot of porn, and I noticed something. I don't know if you're an avid porn user, but online, there's no new porn, unless you pay for it. So I've been watching some of the classics. <laughs> no problem. I could watch some classics. Yeah. But I noticed something that I don't like in porn because I've been watching the same porns over and over. I'm noticing new things, you know? Like, this is something I really don't like. I don't like when male porn stars moan. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck's up with that? It's like you're a professional. Act like you've been there before. <laughs> yeah. And you know, as a male porn star, uh, like, guys are jerking off to this, so why would you moan so loud? You know how distracting that is? <laughs> Have some fucking respect for your fans. Seriously. <laughs> oh, I was watching this porn the other day, and a guy was like, oh, yeah, fuck! Fuck yeah! And I was like, what a fucking weirdo. I'm like, can you shut the fuck up so I can fucking come, please, you fucking weirdo? I don't make any noise when I have sex. Zero. Gentlemen. Nothing. Please and thank you the whole way through. I don't even make noise when I come. When I come, I'm just kind of like... Yeah. Like I just had an epiphany or something. <laughs> like, oh, my keys, they're my jeans. Like, that's how I come. <laughs> Don't forget to turn the oven off. That's how I literally come. <laughs> if I'm drunk, I'll yell out one thing when I come. I'll tell you what it is. Okay? There's one thing I'll yell out when I'm drunk. 
when I come. This is the one thing. Okay, I don't know if any of you are familiar with the film uh, 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> there is a scene in 101 Dalmatians when Jeff Daniels' puppy gives birth. Okay, and this lady taking care of the puppies, she's like, there's 14 puppies. One of them died. There's supposed to be 15, but there's 14. And Jeff Daniels, being the goddamn genius of an actor that he is, <laughs> out of the corner of his eye, notices the 15th puppy that they thought was dead is starting to wiggle, so it's alive. And he looks at the lady and he goes, no, not 14. 15! <laughs> 15 puppies! <laughs> so I yell that when I come now. <laughs> Which is a huge step up from sorry. <laughs> Anybody here ever do shrooms? Like, I'm afraid to do drugs because I love them. Like, whenever I'm about to do a drug, I need to do it with a friend. That way, like, if I die, he dies too. <laughs> for some reason, that would be so much better for my mom to find out. Like, if two of us died, it's not as bad as just me. Does that make sense? <laughs> no, I'm serious, because if I just died, my mom's like, what a fucking drug addict. But if it's me and another friend, they'll be like, that bad influence, Ryan. <laughs> Oh, he said he was no good for my son. <laughs> I picked my friend Ryan to do shrooms with me. My friend Ryan, some of you might know, some of you might not. Um, he's this six foot five, 250 pound black dude from Flatbush, Brooklyn. Okay, he's been to jail a bunch of times for real shit, not for like hopping a turnstile, for like murder. Okay, he didn't do it. And <laughs> yeah, he's nice to me. So I, before I do a drug, I usually Google the best and worst thing that could happen. <laughs> Probably not a good idea, but again, I'm not a smart person. Let me tell you how not smart I am, okay? This is how not smart of a person I am. I thought Chicago was a state until a week ago. Uh, not done. The only reason why I found out Chicago is not a state is because I was in Chicago doing a show, came out and said, wonderful to be in the state of Chicago. <laughs> Nobody said anything. Nobody said anything till the end of the show. So I did a whole show with state of Chicago confidence. <laughs> That's how fucking stupid I am. So I looked up, I was like, what's the best thing that could happen to you on shrooms? best review I saw was, I did shrooms, I saw the world, and I feel like I'm a better person now. And I was like, hey, that's a great review. <laughs> 200 likes, nice. Reliable. Worst review of shrooms, don't do them, jumped out of my window, 500 likes. <laughs> I was like, fuck, I have two windows. So there's doubly the chance. So I got Ryan in my apartment, and I got a guy, a man, to come over to install child locks on my windows. <laughs> and he got to my house, and he was putting in the child locks, and he was like, oh my God, this is so sweet. When's the baby due? And I was like, there's no baby. Me and him are doing shrooms. <laughs> So we do shrooms, and then nothing happens for about an hour. And you know when people do drugs or drink and they, and they just brag about how not fucked up they are? And it's the most annoying thing ever. I, to me, it really bothers me whenever someone's like, drank 14 beers, I don't feel shit. And it's like, oh, maybe you're autistic then because <laughs> you should be fucked up completely, to be honest with you. So we were getting a little mad that it wasn't working, so we turned on this movie with Al Pacino and Christopher Walken. It's a new movie, so just know they already look scary. <laughs> I'm on my phone for like 
20 minutes just scrolling. And you know how when you scroll and it lo the little loading bar comes up so the next page can come up? There was no loading bar. There was just pages coming up. So I was just like, oh, wow, my Wi-Fi is sick. Like, I was very into my Wi-Fi. I was like, Netgear 32, killing it right now. <laughs> Fucking flying through everything, no loading bar. I was very excited. Ryan goes, yo, is Al Pacino orange? <laughs> and I'm scrolling and I looked up and he was, but it didn't bother me. I went back on my phone, I was like, yeah, he is. Really bothered Ryan, because now Ryan was hiding under his Snuggie, shaking. And he said, yo, bro, call me when this is over. So I was freaking out. I was like, already the safest guy that I picked to do shrooms with is already hiding under my Snuggie. I'm fucked. I started sort of panicking and freaking out. I can't do this alone, you know? I can't do anything alone. So I told Ryan, I was like, listen, I'm gonna go downstairs, tell the doorman we're very high on shrooms in case anything happens. <laughs> to which Ryan goes, why the fuck would you do that? And I said, so he knows. It makes no sense, but at the time, it made so much sense to me. He's like, why would you do that? I was like, why the fuck would he do that? So he knows. <laughs> Guy with the questions. <laughs> so then I got in the elevator, it went down one floor, and it stopped, the alarm went off. And I was freaking out. I was like, fuck, I'm fucked. I, I, I need to get out of here. So I started punching the elevator, trying to open it. I was freaking out. I was staring at my fist. I was like, if it ever would happen, it would happen now. Wolverine, come on, one time. <laughs> Wolverine, one time. It didn't happen, obviously. I wouldn't be here right now. I got downstairs. Okay, elevator doors opened. I was too afraid to get out because I was afraid it wouldn't go back up. Makes no sense, but at the time, huge fucking problem. Like, I, I was like, what if it don't go back up? So I just stuck my head out to the doorman, and I was like, hey, it's Pete, third floor. If anything happens, me and my friend Ryan were really high on shrooms. And then he looked at it like this, and then the door just fucking closed <laughs> in his face. I got back upstairs into my apartment. Two windows open, no Ryan. <laughs> to which I said, I fucking knew it. I knew this would happen. 500 people liked it. <laughs> and then Ryan goes, yo, my bad about the windows. I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> I was like, all right, okay. Now, normally, I don't care when my friends are in the bathroom for over an hour. <laughs> and I don't ask what's going on in there. But we were both on shrooms, and it was over an hour. So I was like, hey, Ryan, what the fuck's going on in there? And he was like, bro, you gotta get in here. <laughs> Ryan's been in jail. So I was like, is this jail Ryan? Or is this my friend Ryan that we all know and love? I get in there, this is a true, this is exactly what's going on. He's naked in his boxers, flexing. Having the fucking time of his life, just flexing. He's like, uh, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, what's up, bro? Like, what's going on? And he's like, I'm the Hulk. And I didn't know what he was talking about. I was, like, I was like, what do you mean you're the Hulk? He goes, don't you see, I'm green. I'm the very first Black Hulk. <laughs> and he kept flexing and I was like, I don't, I don't get it. And he was like, look in the mirror. This is the only time that I tripped. I looked at Ryan like this, looked at him into the mirror. He turned green into the mirror. And I was like, oh my God, you are the Hulk. Congratulations, this is sick. So then I got a little cocky and I was like, perhaps I'm also the Hulk. <laughs> And I took my shirt off, and I just looked very sick. I was like, I need to get out of here immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan gets on the couch. We're watching, we're about to watch the rest of this movie. The second we hit play, it's a scene where Al Pacino comes out from behind a corner and goes, hello! And we were like, fuck that. That's the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. So we shut it off. 
was horrifying. Seeing a 75-year-old orange person go, hello, was fucking terrifying. So now me and Ryan are both high on shrooms, uh, shirtless under our Snuggie, just shaking, holding each other. And then my mom texts me, okay? My mom sends the worst possible text you could send when someone's violently high on shrooms. She sends me, uh, Pete, just wanna let you know I'm so proud of you. I love everything you're doing. You make such smart decisions and dad would be very proud. And then I just started crying. I was like, oh man, my mom's all proud. I'm on shrooms. I wasn't even the Hulk. Like it was just this whole fucked up, a bad day. And then Ryan goes, shut the fuck up. And you know when you're crying and your friend don't care, it makes you cry more. When you're like, uh, and your friend's like, uh, and you're like, uh, like, uh, please care. So it made me cry more. I was like, what do you mean? Like, who does that? And he was like, bro, seriously, shut the fuck up. I'm gonna punch you in the face. I was like, well, uh, why can't you just be my friend? Why can't you just be there for me? And he's like, because I miss my mom too. And then he started crying and then we both <laughs> held each other and cried under my Snuggie. And then the shroom trip was over and then Ryan did the funniest thing I've ever seen anybody do. Um, he took the Snuggie off and he dabbed his eyes with it. And then he looked at me and he went, yo Pete, shrooms, incredible. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So, we'll do some 9-11 jokes and then we'll get the fuck out of here. How's that sound? <laughs> it's hard to transition into anything. I don't have, I don't know if you noticed anything about my comedy, but there's, there's not many transitions. <laughs> it's very like, dick, fuck, dad. Like, it's like very straightforward, easy listening comedy. <laughs> like, you know, it's not the Kendrick Lamar. I'm very French Montana of comedy. <laughs> Like, after every joke, I should just be like, ha, ah, and you'd be like, aha! I get it. So, yeah, my dad, if you don't know, he was a fireman, he died 9-11. He was a very good dude. Uh, and I have a lot of jokes about it. And if you don't like the first one, you probably won't like the rest. <laughs> What's cool about your dad dying on 9-11 is, uh, besides the free parking, is also, oh, for one, Skirball. <laughs> That's not the only good thing about your dad dying, come on. No, the cool thing about my dad dying and being a fireman was like, now I get all of his fireman gear. So whenever I smoke weed in New York City, I wear it. Yeah, so now people just think I'm a shitty fireman. <laughs> but I'll be so high, I'll forget. Like, people come up to me and be like, you're a fucking disgrace. And I'll be like, you're a fucking disgrace. <laughs> I'll be like, oh shit, I'm a lieutenant. I forgot, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Have a good day, ma'am. <laughs> I didn't really care when my dad died. I, it, it didn't bother me very much because I was seven. You don't understand things when you're seven. You know, if it, if it happened now, I'd be in a world of trouble, but I'm actually, it's weird to say this, I'm lucky it happened when I was seven. I know it sounds weird, but it's, a, it's the real thing. Like, I remember my dad died and my mom was like, your dad's dead, but we got you a PlayStation 2. And I was like, yeah, cool. <laughs> I was like, that seems about even. <laughs> That's pretty fair. No, I'm serious. I really didn't care. I was like, I'm gonna push my mom down the stairs and get a PS3. That was fucking ridiculous. <laughs> It's my new life of murder and toys. <laughs> What's weird is my grandma on my mom's side, my mom's mom, she, uh, her birthday's on 9-11. And she never liked my dad. <laughs> kind of fishy, isn't it? <laughs> I always wanted to ask her. I always wanted to be like, Hey, Grandma, on the low. 
Did you make any wishes? <laughs> no, every year my grandma's birthday comes around and she's like, I'm not gonna celebrate it. And I'm always like, why? Did something happen? <laughs> I wanna get a tattoo. Uh, I wanna get my dad's initials. Um, it's a very like Italian, Staten Island thing to do. I feel like Italian people are almost like waiting for someone in their family to die <laughs> so they can go get a tattoo. <laughs> I'm serious, you ever been to like an Italian funeral or wake and the son of whoever died has like the prayer card going down their side? <laughs> You're like, how the fuck did you do that already? And it's like healed. <laughs> I, um, I want to get my dad's initials, you know? I want to get it tattooed on me. I feel like it'd be very cool. Uh, but I found out recently I can't. I don't know why I never noticed it. I guess I just never pay attention. But my dad's initials are SMD. Yeah. That's why we named the special SMD. But SMD also has other meanings, like, for instance, suck my dick. <laughs> That's the more popular meaning, believe it or not. So my friends are like, you can't get that tattoo because people will think you're an asshole, you know? And I, I agree, I'm like, you're right, I shouldn't. But then I thought about it, I was like, I should. I was like, I could only win. I was like, if someone has the balls to bring it up to me, oh, I will win, like, so fast. <laughs> like, I will never lose, it's so dope. Think about that, I'll have it on my neck, fucking having a good time, girls come up to me and they're like, you're a fucking pig. All I gotta do is be like, mm. <laughs> actually, it's my dead dad's initials. And then they'll feel so bad, they'll probably suck my dick. <laughs> hey guys, you've been amazing, thank you. Thank you for coming out, thank you very much. Guys, all right, yeah.